Welcome to the Everyday Board Game Podcast with Daniel. And Daniel. And today we are going to be joining in on another one of our top eight debates. And this is a topic that we're finally going to stop talking about Gloomhaven and Harry Potter Hogwarts battle and what some of the others that kept popping up over our past top eight debates. Hey, there's one that pops up a couple times on this debate, so I don't want to hear it. That's true. I mean, it's not it's not nearly as common, but yeah, you're you're not wrong. <laughs> and so <laughs> But yeah, uh, we're stepping away from like the main ones, but I mean, Quacks showed up a couple times. Oh, that's right. The last one was Push Your Luck, so Gloomhaven wasn't going to show up on that one. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of Quacks of Quedlinburg, um it's it's pretty awesome because my wife finally got to play it the other day. Okay. And we've played it three times since. She, she, she enjoyed it then. Loves it. Absolutely <laughs> loves it. She's actually considering letting me buy... Hey, Intense, yeah. nice, nice to see you. Um, she's actually considering letting me buy uh, the Geek Up bits. The $42 <laughs> plastic tokens. No, no tokens. I recommend it just because of the way the cardboard shits out. I mean, they haven't. We haven't had a single problem with the cardboard yet, but it's still less than ten plays, yeah, how so often we'll have see. You it? Yeah, right. Exactly. That copy. Especially if you're going to use it for uh, once everything opens up again and you start teaching board games again. Right. Yep. That that's going to be one of my demos. Play, so. Oh yeah. Yeah, it will. It's going to get to the table real fast. All right. So we're this top eight today is the top eight Rio Grande games, and for those of you guys who don't know what Rio Grande games is. It's not based off the river, it is that company. Um, the brand of, of Rio Grande Games started, I think, in the mid-90s. And the way it works is... Uh, or the way... It, it was created by John, Jay Tumbleson, who used to work for Mayfair Games. What they focused on is, is his main job was to go to Europe and different parts of like Germany and find all of these local board games that were really popular and then bring them to the United States. He was instrumental. Made in Germany. Yeah. Made in Germany. And he, he was really instrumental in bringing stuff like Catan over. So that's really kind of like the bread and butter. So when Re he made Rio Grande games, that was a lot of their baseline. Now they've made a lot of other games on top of that, that have been first from Rio Grande games and then published elsewhere. Um, through a lot of the same partners, but some of these games have been published by other publishers. Like Alea was a big worker with them, Ravensburg, uh, Ravensburger before they started coming to America, getting really popular. Um, there's a few others that are just escaping my, escaping me, right now. And some yeah, of them, I can't think of them. yeah, there, there's a few games on this list also that are not being published by Rio Grande at the moment. Like uh, by Z Man, I think a couple mm -hmm. of these are. Yeah, both. I think Stone Age and Carcassonne both are. Um, I don't know about Puerto Rico off the top of my head, but I know Raw was bought by um, uh, Fantasy Flight, basically. <laughs> and yeah. so they make Raw now. So some of these, we'll be talking about those. Just something to keep in mind as we're debating these. This is, And we are going to be talking specifically about the Rio Grande version. So games like Raw is... I'm not going to argue. I don't know if you've seen the art for the older Raw. Um, no. As far as art and production, I will be arguing that version, not the newer reprint that's really beautiful. Uh, so most of these games, I don't know if I've played the actual Rio Grande game version of them. Like, so the art and production is kind of like something that's lost on me, especially for the Rio Grande part. Uh -huh. um, all of these games, as we've always said, are games that we've played. I have played all of these. I just don't. I the only one I know for sure I played the Rio Grande version is is the Carcassonne. Yeah, because I yeah. own that version. And you've probably played um, the Rio Grande version of Power Grid because you played my personal copy, and that, that was the Rio Grande version. Most of these are are fairly similar. I know there's like a newer version of Puerto Rico that has much nicer art, um, or actually has which art. One, I should which say is the one that you own. I own the older version where you it just has gray tiles. Yeah, mm -hmm. I played that one. Yeah. And that one's ugly. Let's see here. Actually, is that the Rio Grande version? Uh, my Where's Puerto Rico. Alea? It's not a Leia because otherwise it would be over here. <laughs> now I'm just losing it wherever it is. Wait, well, well, why is, why is uh, what is it, Fifth Avenue over there and that has a Rio Grande and not a Leia? 
That's a great question. Anyway, so is Mammoth Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's not nitpick. All right, I I just picked the ones that look nice together. How about that? <laughs> um, yeah. So, and besides, uh, actually, yeah, I do. Mine is the Rio Grande version, but you'll notice even on the bottom here, my Puerto Rico is the Rio Grande version, but we have ones like Rio Grande, all that stuff, uh, and and other ones. Your magicians still are activating and you didn't right? I know. Things just transform into other games and move shelves all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Alright, so uh Daniel, what have you been playing lately or have you been playing lately? I haven't been playing much lately. I actually just got a new video game, so I've been playing that. Um I try to solo, but I it's just it's hard to get to the table uh and just do the setup and the build up. Especially since the one main games I solo over here are such a bear to set up, and Wingspan is probably like the easiest one to do. Right. But um, I did buy some new games. I got Archaeology, the new expedition in the mail recently. Um, and of course, Cartographers and Castles of Burgundy, the dice game, the flipping rights I've been playing. Those are such easy games to do. Yeah. Other than that, not too much board gaming itself, other than. The only board gaming stuff I've been doing is our, pod our podcast and the editing of it. Gotcha. Yeah, yesterday I played uh, an intense tournament with my son on Loop and Louie. <laughs> and we each had two paddles. And one, and because my arms were longer, mine had to be like on the way other side while he had the two that were closest to him. So it gave him a little bit of an advantage. But I still beat him two <laughs> of the three rounds that we played. <laughs> oh, I uh, forgot to mention, I did play... Um... Jackbox games uh, Wednesday with some friends, which were er, it's, it's not really board gaming, but they, they had some, they have a, a game on there, I don't know if you know, that's kind of like Wits and Wagers, and it's based, mm -hmm. based on percentages, called I guess it's Gespionage, which I thought was actually kind of neat. <laughs> that's so you cool. try to guess the percentage of the question, like how many people do this out of ask, is it 2%, 5%, and then it's higher or lower, do you think uh, it's a higher percentage or a lower percentage if you're the other players? Interesting. Huh, that's cool. Yeah, it was, it was a neat little game. But just so everybody knows, Jackbox is freaking loud. So we did it over a Zoom call. And we, even though the volume was turned a lot of the way down, we could still barely hear each other talk. That's how loud Jackbox was. Oh, God. That's no fun. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I played it once a couple years ago at like a <laughs> house party. And we had probably about 15 people. All playing. We're playing the phone version. And so the way Jackbox works is that um, so our my our buddy had it on and he screen shared like the main thing, but you use your phones to make your answers. So you log into I think it's Jackbox TV. You put in the code for the the game that we're playing, and then um, your answers and stuff go on through your phone rather than um, like the computer and stuff like that. This way we all can still play. Yeah. I can only play Yahtzee since that's what I got on hand. Wow. Yeah, the 390 on Yahtzee is Yeesh. obscene. I've never gotten anything close to that, I don't think. That's awesome. <laughs> and then the monster dating game is funny with Jackbox. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time I've actually played Jackbox, so I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, Other definitely. Other than the fact that it's like super loud, bastard. Yeah, it was, it was good fun. Alright, uh... Let's talk about our honorable mentions. Like we said, Rio Grande games. I'm probably more familiar with them than you are. Um, oh, I, it, it was tough for me to find other games that I played that didn't make into our top eight to talk about in our honorable mentions. Because some of them I've only played once and don't really remember them. Yeah. So there's two games on here that I have uh, for honorable mentions that I actually remember playing and having fun with. That's awesome. Yeah, it's... I, I have... One that I saw right now, and I'm looking at it, and I know that I'm willing to put money that you have it on your list, so I'm not going to be talking about it, <laughs> but uh, I will bring that up. One of, one of these two honorable mentions I used to own. Yeah, that's probably the one that I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ear piercing attack. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so uh, why don't you go first for your honorable mentions, and then I can confirm... If the one I'm thinking right, of is so the one you talked about. I'll start with the one that you think it is what it is. What do you think it is? Rattlebones. 
Yeah. Okay. Rattle Bones is probably one of the first Rio Grande games I've ever played. This is one of the first ones outside of Carcassonne that you showed me. And I liked it. It's a it's a fun little dice crafting game. The only problem for me with when it comes to Rattlebones is that I have another dice crafting game that just blows it out of the water and is much quicker and you know prettier to look at, and that's a uh, Dice Forge. So other than that, Rattlebones is kind of cool. It's a roll and move game in a sense where you're trying to pick up pieces and you're trying to meet. Be the first one to meet the the little black meeple, I guess is what it is. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but you're yeah, trying to get rattle past bones. him. Yeah, name. rattle bones. Yeah, that, that's the end game scenario. Yeah, which is a cool mechanism. I remember oh, I, wa yeah. I watched, uh, or not watched a video, but I read an interview with the designer, and he really was, his goal with that game was to make Dominion the dice game. That, that was really his intention, and I see what he's talking about. Whereas, like, there's other versions that are, like, dice building, like, uh... Or it's more like bag building with different kinds of dice, like uh, the um, Dice Masters games, which are somewhere around here. Yeah, yeah, somewhere around here. Dice Masters, there you go. As a D and D version, uh, that that's kind of the same idea, but you're you don't change the dice themselves. Or in Rattlebones and Dice Forge, which is the one you were talking about, uh, those both have like where you're changing the faces of the dice, which are like the three only three games that I know of that have that. Um, I know there's an expansion for Roll for the Galaxy that had it, and there's a newer one coming up, but, um, and then the Lego games. The Lego games, you craft your own dice, yeah. which is I ridiculous. I have one of the Lego games behind me. Yeah? <laughs> uh, the wife got it for her birthday, I want to say. It's the Lego Harry Potter game. Oh, which yeah. Which is not a bad game. It no. wasn't that bad. No, it's, it's cool. I, I appreciated them for what they were trying to do. Yeah. It was pretty awesome, but... They were just, like, okay games at best. You know, they weren't yeah, made by so game designers. Yeah, so I would give them an average rating if I had to rate the Lego games. For sure, yeah. All right, my honorable mention, number one, is Race for the Galaxy. Now, if you see behind me, I have a game called San Juan right there. And they're effectively more or less the same game. Um, I prefer San Juan. That's the game I was looking at buying. Uh, that's on sale right now. Oh, really? It's on sale? You yeah. need to buy it. It's, oh my god, it's so good. No, I enjoyed it. That's why it's on my short list of getting it. It's like 20 bucks, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's worth it. Because San Juan and Race for the Galaxy are so similar. I've owned both, but because I liked how streamlined San Juan was versus Race for the Galaxy, which was just, the, the difference between it is that in San Juan, you pick an action, and then you everybody takes the action but you get the benefit for it so you get a little bonus in uh in race for the galaxy everybody chooses their action they flip it over and you get whatever bonus that you picked for but only the actions that were picked amongst the group can be done that round so it's a slightly different but ultimately the economics work pretty much the same i like the dry euro version of it better but I can't say that it do. wasn't good. Yeah, I did enjoy it, and it did a lot of neat things to it. So, uh, Race for the Galaxy is my first honorable mention. I think the issue for me with uh, that I've heard, I haven't played Race for the Galaxy myself, or else it would have made this list, or I think Roll for mm -hmm. the Galaxy would have made this list. Probably. Uh, uh, is the iconography. It's like iconography heavy. Yeah, it is, but most of them make sense. Uh, for you, you would have trouble, because a lot of the icons are very dependent on color. There are parts of the icons where it's like, oh, well, is that a brown circle or is that a tan circle? Or is that a red or is that a yellow circle? Yeah, that, yeah. that's one of the reasons that stopped me from playing Race from the Galaxy and, and Roll for the Galaxy. Because yeah. I know a lot of it, at least with Roll for the Galaxy, I know the dice or the color, basically, and then they just have different symbols. Yes, yeah, but the color of the dice are not distinguished other than... And they use a lot of pastel colors, too. So there is, like, That's a purple my, my and a pink. Thing. Give me vibrant colors. I can see those better than pastel. Yep, exactly. So you you might still have trouble. I, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't as bad as it seems. But Roll for the Galaxy. Um, I'm glad I finally got to play it. Uh, it was okay. It wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my next honorable mention, and my last one, because it's literally was very hard for me to come up with. I, I had to scroll through BGG and look at all the games. Nope. 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 nope, nope, nope. I think I got like the page <laughs> eight or something like that before I finally yeah. found both my honorable mentions. And you actually mentioned the most recent one, the one I just talked about. Um, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. 
because you were going through the pages too. Uh huh. Um, and so my next one is uh, a little card game. Uh, can you guess which one it is? Bonanza. I, I, yes, it is. It's Bonanza. I forgot about Bonanza. That's such a good pick. Yeah. Yeah. So I really enjoy Bonanza. It's a nice little card game by Juve Rosenberg. He's known for two things. Really, really massive dry euros or really, really small fun card games. He has a third now, polyominoes. Oh, that's right. He's starting to do the whole <laughs> polyominal po trend now. Right. Because uh, isn't Feast for Odin polyominoes? Feast for Odin is, Patchwork is, all of the, like, Indian Summer, all four of those games are. Um, he has, like, one called uh, Second Chance now, that is. And then he released another, that's a roll and write, and he released another roll and write that is also, like, almost the same game. It Patchwork Doodles is another one. <laughs> like, it's, they're all polyomino games. So, I don't remember Bonanza all that much. I've only played it a handful of times, but I just remember every time I played it, I just have a blast playing it. You're, you're basically a bean farmer with human-like beans. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and so, it's a... They, I think they just announced a deluxe version coming out. Um, I think uh, like a 20 year anniversary or something like that. Uh, I saw it like on a Dice Tower News or something like that. Wow. So I'm interested in picking it up if they do release it because I've had so much fun playing that game. Um, you could probably describe it a lot better than I could. Yeah, well, I mean, Bonanza, it's very simple. You have either two or three farms, depending on how much you, you've invested in it. Uh, you can only plant one type of bean per farm. And every turn you go through these rounds of like drawing cards, negotiating, you don't change the card order in your hand. And so that matters because when you play, you have to play the farthest forward card you have. And so if that doesn't match one of the two fields you have, well, that's replacing it. So a big thing about it is trading and actively like trying to get rid of your cards and pawn them off on other players while adding to your fields at the same time. It's, oh my God, then what... It's it's now the replacement that I tell people for, like, Monopoly if they like the negotiation part of it. It's like, this mm -hmm. game is all negotiation. Yeah. Um, I'd actually play this more than I would play Pit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't it gives you that same feel where you're negotiating, hey, I need to get rid of these things, give me these things for it. If you can, we'll make these trades. Here, you want these, I'll give you these if I can get this. And less Bell. Yeah, less Bell. Always less Bell. I don't mind the bell, but I'm tired of getting my hand slapped every time I try to touch the bell. Right. It, so you're going to like archaeology then. It plays similar to, very similar to it, but it's like, it's like archaeology meets uh, gin rummy. Yeah, no, I, I looked into it, I watched the reviews for it, and I'm like, yeah. I want to get it to the table. Yeah, it feels different when you get it to the table though. Because I watched the reviews on how it plays too, and I was like, okay, I got a good grasp on it. And I played it, and I'm like, wow, this feels a lot different than I thought it was going to. So. Plus, this is what I've been buying lately. Look at how small these boxes are. <laughs> right. There's the archaeology, and then here, here, here's Castles of Burgundy, uh -huh. the dice game. And, and here I am buying. this is the bigger of the three, and this is Cartographers, and it's still small. Yep, that's the biggest of the three. Can you guess my, my other honorable mention? Probably not, because it took me for freaking ever. Is it probably one of the ones behind you? Uh, It's over here. Over on the side. I'll okay. get one of them. I'll give you a hint. It's part of a series of seven games. Technically eight. Series of seven games? Technically eight? What? Yep. Have I played them? Because like uh, I only remember Bonanza and Rattlebones. So. You, know, you know what they are. For sure. And you're going to know it as soon as I show you. Is it a Feld game? Nope. It is by Chris Berm. I'm drawing a blank on this. It is the Gift Series. Oh, God, yes. The well, Gift that's why I'm drawing series. a blank, because I avoid them like the plague. I know you hate abstract strategies, but oh, God, they're so good. There is six in the series. Uh, one of them, technically there was six originally in the series. Then one of them got replaced because it had a bunch of sand timers in it, and it was really weird. Um, and then that one got play replaced, so technically there was seven at that point. But then they made a seventh one, which was actually the eighth one. And that's not including any of the other series that they have. Like, they have, like, kind of like almost peace packs, where they have, like, packs of games and, like, some generic boards with hexagons on it and stuff. And the goal is you try and make your own gift project series. 
Um, it's weird, <clears throat> but some of the best abstract strategy games came from that. Yinch is phenomenal. Uh, I do like GIF, the one that started it, but that's probably my third or fourth favorite out of all of them. I like uh, Czar and Devon quite a bit as well. Yeah, so easier not to talk about these, but horrible choices. <laughs> I mean, it's different flavor for different people, but unfortunately, yeah. there's no abstract strategies as far as what Rio Grande is known for. So, well, I you won't honestly, have to argue against them. Honest, abstract strategy is such a niche part of board gaming itself. A lot yeah. of them don't really get a lot, of, a lot of love. In fact, I think I own two abstract strategy games. Which two? Onitama. And, uh... Yeah? Gobble It? I think that's what it's called. Oh, yeah. It's like Goblet. a tic-tac-toe where you stack and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think those are the only two I own. The one with, like, the like the nesting doll style yeah. cups, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Goblet's cool. Uh, what makes Goblet more enjoyable for you than others? I honestly don't know. I, huh. I, to be truthfully honest, I don't know. I mean, I like chess. I'm not good at it, but I enjoy chess, and Stratego's fine. But mm -hmm. just, I'm not a huge fan of abstract strategy games. At least with Goblet, it the pieces are nice. I yeah. don't, honestly don't know. Yeah, right. It's a wood box. It's a wood thing. I just I remember having fun with it, and the wife having fun with it. And it's a nice little two player game to bust out. But even then, I don't even play that. I play if I'm gonna play an abstract strategy two player. It's only Tom I'm gonna pull out. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and I know your wife really doesn't like abstract well, strategy. She can't stand them. Yeah, yeah. So that's another reason why I have those two is uh, she likes Goblet and she likes uh, Onitama. She has had fun with both those games. And I think the reason being is with Onitama, she knows everything that's out there. What moves I can do, what moves she can do. It's Everything's out there for us to know. So she can really strategy-wise what she's going to do. Well, I mean, like the same is for something like, say, Shobu. But she didn't like that. She well, I'll give her this. She said it. She said she didn't enjoy it, but she didn't hate it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Which that's, that's is a compliment. <laughs> no, I mean, well, as far as abstracts go, like to say yeah. it's like, like that wasn't like. She was like, yeah, that was interesting. I don't like it, you know. But it didn't like. She wasn't enraged. <laughs> this is where I'm going with that. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, just we're not fans of abstract strategy game. Uh, yeah. They they could be dry as all get out euros, and she would enjoy it more than an abstract strategy right. game. Right. Yeah, she needs the theme. Well, you're a little more lenient on it, so. Yeah. Speaking of dry euro games, are we about ready to get started? Yes. Uh, let's do a quick break, real quick, and then uh, we'll get going. All right. Sounds good. We're gonna pause for a quick break to reset the video, and then we'll be on to round one.